They don't have a blasphemy law in Japan, do they? My parents aren't really Catholic. They're just nominal, nominal Catholics. Nah, they're like, yeah, God's probably real and shit. Well, did they, here's the question, did they vote for the abortion thing? They voted. Yeah, but did they, were they for or against? That's none of your business. <laughs> you oh, that's, that's an answer there. Uh, okay, okay. Okay, but if it was some of his business, what would you say it was? <laughs> <laughs> Nah, I better be careful what I say around these fuckers. <laughs> yeah, you, that's very wise of you. It is very so wise of me. So, did you vote in the abortion thing? I voted. Ah. So, da Mary, David did try and stop women from having okay, control I, of their no, bodies. I, I, I figured he would. <laughs> He's that kind of guy. <laughs> I just hate women. I just hate women so much. <laughs> <laughs> I just can't help myself. <laughs> yep. All right. This this opportunity, this grand opportunity, spoke yeah. to me, David. This is your chance no, to yeah, screw over women. We're all like, oh, masculine domination. I will exert some now. So I exerted the shit out of it all yeah. over Gosh. all the women. Doing your fast up, hold the patriarchy. Why is exactly. this ballot so sticky? Masculine <laughs> 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 domination. <laughs> All right, so I think we'll get started then. All right, All right probably a good idea before we say anything even worse. <laughs> For some reason, all of my videos are getting uh, yeah. <laughs> the ad There's revenue a reduced. strike against uh, sex. Uh, Jonathan? <clears throat> yeah? All right, so you wake up the next evening in your hotel, and I believe you wanted to meet up with, try and meet up with the prince of the city. I believe so, that's correct, yeah. Alright. Okay. Um, give me a intelligence plus uh, politics. That would be four. Okay. I don't believe my specialty applies here. Okay. Yeah, so after uh, a little bit of time, you manage to, um, around sort of the the rack scene, you're able to find another um, vampire and get them to take you to the authority here. Um, you're not sure, you've heard there's been some sort of anarch takeover in the city, so you're not sure if it's a prince, but you have to be taken to whoever's in charge. Right. All right. So yeah, it's, uh, you're taken to see a woman with uh, some sort of large dog with her that meets you in sort of a abandoned looking warehouse area. Right then, I will approach her and I will introduce myself as Jonathan Lice of Clan Toreador. All right. Yeah, she just kind of nods in recognition. See if then, you have anything else to say. I would like to ask your permission to hunt, or feed rather, in this city of yours while I pass through. Where exactly are you passing through to? The city of Gary. Alright. So, she kind of basically takes you aside. Um, and basically lays out for you, uh, just there's a lot of stuff going on in the city right now. So she pretty much wants you out of here as quickly as possible. The fact that you said that you're from Gary makes her kind of uncomfortable, which is why she's dominating you. Um, oh. <laughs> Um, basically, she lays out, San Antonio has gone through a lot of shit recently. Like, buildings have been blowing up, people have been going on car chases. Yeah. People have been going on car chases, people have been blowing <laughs> shit up. It's a bad town, basically. And she hasn't, the fact that you're coming from Gary, the city that is currently in flames, or heading to there, has raised some suspicions on her part. Yeah. yeah. So... Um, she basically just tells you she's going to keep you 
uh, under control until the next plane out to Chicago is available and then put you on it. Because uh, she doesn't want you frenzying, she is going to provide uh, a some blood for you. And she, as part of, things just kind of pass in a blur for you for a little while. Okay, I don't, I don't expect, expect I get the chance to ask for an easy way out. No, 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 no. Right, I figured that. Uh, you are given uh, blood packs filled with Vitae. So okay. that uh, is enough to fill you up to five. Right, then from where I am, or where I am plus five? No, from where you are, you're raised up to five. Okay. okay. I will gladly accept that. Okay. So, you're in just sort of a little bit of a haze for a while until you were taken out of the warehouse, um, and you next kind of come to your senses uh, in the uh, public library. All mm. right. So there is, around me. yeah, there is, he looks basically kind of like a goon to you, but he is around and says, the prince told me to keep an eye on you until your plane is ready. You can go around, do whatever you want, but stay inside the building until, and he checks his clock in like a few hours. Very well, I accept those terms. When I'm beginning looking around to see if I can find any books on uh, my particular situation. All right. <laughs> and I know the, the, my dimension thing specifically. All right. Give me a intelligence plus academics. Seven. And my specialty absolutely applies here. It is in literature. All right. <laughs> Your specialty is not literature. Okay. All right. <laughs> All right. So, um, you look through, um, and you do not find any books um, on interdimensional entities outside of the fictional genre. Okay. Um, yeah. What a shame. It doesn't take you very long at all, really. Hmm. Is there anything else I can do with this time, or...? Um, there are, you've lost your cell phone and everything, so there are some computers here you could check. Oh, absolutely. I'm still, uh, supposed to have an email address, do I? Yeah. Yeah, I'll check so that So if you want to just, you know, check your email, social media, etc. Yeah. Well, pleasure to meet. So, uh, you find that you've received a number of messages from Stephen and Terry, and then friend requests on Facebook and everything else. Remind me again, what year does this take place? Uh, it takes place right now. Okay. Yeah, I'll uh, read through the emails then, and I assume just asking where I am, how I'm doing, etc. Yeah, basically trying to get in contact. Okay, I'll respond to those then, and say that I finally managed to escape from the forest. I believe I'm back now, and I'm heading to the location in Gary. All right. So, Stephen and Terry, uh, yes. and Stephen's sire. Mm -hmm. So, you guys have been um, driving for a little while. It's not too far into the evening mm -hmm. um, when you guys are pulling up outside of your haven in Gary. So, um, it is at this point that you receive a little message on your phone, your new phone, that you guys picked up. Okay. Um, that uh, Jonathan has gotten contact with you. The email. The uh, you okay. know, the internet. All right. And to the on the Discord app, and he yes. has sent you a message. <laughs> He's message me on the Discord app. Awesome. I wrote. I wrote him on Tinder. <laughs> Grinder. <laughs> um. So okay. So he says he's okay. He's in San Antonio. He's making his way back to Gary. Yeah. All right, so I will let my sister, Terry, know about that. Okay. Apparently, Jonathan is okay. He wound up in San Antonio somehow. Probably the same way we wound up in Atlantic City. All right, 
I guess he's coming back here. I don't have any other messages from anybody. Ryan hasn't. Uh, you may want to come a little bit or speak I, up. I, I think you might be a little bit quiet. Uh, okay, sorry. Alrighty. Um, so what was that you asked? So I said I haven't received any messages from anyone else. Um, no Derek, no Ryan? No, not from anyone else. Okay. Well, then I guess I'll head inside. All right. So, uh, Terry heads in with you. Your sire stays outside for the time being. Um, so, you open up the door. Okay. And it, it's all dark inside. Mm -hmm. Flip the light switch. Yeah, so you uh, flip the light switch. Doesn't come on. Okay. So with all specs, I'll check and is there anything in there? All right. Give me a perception plus alertness. That is four. All right. So you notice a couple of things. You can see that it seems like the light bulbs have been taken out of the the lighting. That's one thing you notice, which would be why it's not turning on, possibly. Mm -hmm. Also, you can hear something a little bit further inside the house. Something scary, like Slenderman, or uh, something? Yeah, it sounds like voices of some kind. Okay, well, I've never heard Slenderman speak. That's true. All right, well, I throw my gun, right? Yeah. Does my gun fire? Is it? You couldn't replace the bullets by now. Okay. On your way back. All right. So I will nod to Terry as I take out my gun so that he should do likewise. Yeah, he's already got it out. All right. And then we will, uh, well, you know, give him directions of what we're going to do. Go toward these voices to find out more. All right. So, uh, yeah, you start following in the voices, and uh, it seems to be coming from uh, upstairs, first of all. Um, and then, as you're kind of creeping up the staircase, the voices seem to change, and it sounds like some sort of weird electronic modulation. Just like weird interference -y sounds, things like that. Hmm. All right. What room is it coming from? Uh, it's coming from uh, the, well, it looks like it's the games room. Okay. But, uh, like, all of the, like, doors are open, and you can see that something, like, things have been strung all between everything on this floor. Looks like cable cords and then pieces of paper. <laughs> and what's on the pieces of paper, may I ask? All right. Well, as you pick one up, you can see it's a weird thing. It's like a circle with an X written through it. Uh-huh. Looks like maybe it's been drawn by Ryan. <laughs> uh, it looks like it's been drawn by a madman, so... Okay, so I would assume Ryan. And then there's cables connecting between rooms? Yeah. What are they connecting? Uh, you want to check? Yes. All right. So... What the hell Ryan's done here? <laughs> uh, give me a dexterity plus dodge. That will be two. All right. Ryan, give me a dexterity plus melee. <laughs> oh. Um. Shit. Just realized something. <laughs> it's more than two. That's a sheet. Yeah. Mate. Oh, oh mate. shit. Oh, that's right. I'm looking at the wrong computer. <laughs> Mate. <laughs> David. Shot. We were doing so well. Oh, wait, no, I know, I know this one. one. Dexterity is, uh. Let's see. Daylight Street is Dexterity is four. Mm hmm. Dexterity Tree, six. All right. I think. <laughs> well, roll six for now while you sort your shit out. 
What's your strength? Strength's a tree. Okay. Probably. Strength's a tree. Probably. Pretty sure model or right is melee, so. All right. And what is your stamina? Two. Three. My stamina. Yeah. Because you hit me, Ryan. All right. So you take uh, one point of normal damage uh, as Ryan streaks screaming out of the shadows from invisibility, smacks you on the arm. Ow! <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, you guys both recognize each other. So, Ryan. Oh! Ow! This is taking place sometime after your last uh, incident. Mm -hmm. You might remember you rushed forward and uh, attacked. Tried to attack the you oh, tried to attack erect. the entity fully erect, yes. Uh, That's the, right. The moment it seems like you were about to make contact when you just felt you were swinging through air, you didn't connect with anything. Um, at this point, you just. Uh, Blacked out entirely for a moment, and when you came to, uh, Lucy was completely gone, as was the creature. So, up until that, until about this point, you've been pretty much feverish with insanity, since there is, at this point, no one around uh, to assist you that's familiar to yeah. you. Okay. Um, I see. And so you've been basically passing in and out of Frenzy pretty regularly for uh, some amount of time. Uh, obviously, it's been at least a day, because you remember falling asleep at some point, but you're not sure how many days, anything like that. A um, full day of Frenzy. Uh, at least, possibly more. Um, That's crazy. So the other thing that uh, you've noticed is that, uh, to make matters worse, uh, Lucy keeps trying to use the Presence Ability Summon on you, basically calling for help. Um, but whereas Summon usually tells you where to go, uh, you've basically been given no sense of direction, so you just psychically hear her calling you for help uh, every few hours or so. Oh, God. So, Lord's Orchards. yeah, you've been basically crazy for a while. Uh, you believed someone was sneaking into the place, and, uh, bonked him. Uh, then you see it's Steven. Someone was Steven. Yes. It is me. I see. <laughs> Hello. Hello. <laughs> How goes this, my friends? <laughs> Steven's just gonna look around. And what is Ryan out of frenzy now? Uh, yeah, you're, you're pretty much out of frenzy. All right. Greetings, comrades. So, Ryan, you appear, you appear to have been busy. Is he I've still been naked? Most preoccupied. I I'm assuming he's naked. Okay. <laughs> Am I still a rat? <laughs> no, I wouldn't say so. <laughs> Would have been quite impressive. Um, so... All right, so why don't you fill me in on what happened here, Ryan? <laughs> I just, I feel like there's All a right. story when, like, Ryan's naked and has electronics um, scattered. Through. All right, I'll try to keep this as brief. He broke up. Run away from someone. Find my way back here. Lucy's here. She helps me try to find a place to stay. Can't get in touch with the prince. We end up getting nowhere, come back here, then that guy, you know, the slender man looking fucker, shows up and robbed Lucy and I tried to attack it and here I am now. I see. Um, I've been... Oh, and something else I forgot to mention is yeah, while wow. You guys are in the city of Gary. All rolls to resist frenzy are increased by a difficulty of one because of the fire, which is the, on the horizon the fire. at pretty much all times. I see. Uh, is my house in any danger? No. Basically, you're pretty far away. It's just sort of like when there's a big wildfire or something, like you can see in okay, the distance the, the sort of reddish, reddish glow. Hmm. 
All right. And it smells so, smoky all the time. All right. So here is what I've gotten from oh, Ryan. Is that he ran away from somebody, came back to the haven. Lucy was here. Um, <laughs> uh, paired up with her, tried to find the prince or something, and then came back here, and he attacked Slenderman. Yeah. At what point did you get naked? <laughs> Listen. All right. I uh, well, I woke up like this. <laughs> he took my clothes Slenderman as well. Slenderman also <laughs> disarmed me. <laughs> that bastard. I see. It would seem Slenderman attempts to disarm me. Uh-huh. I see. Yeah. Um, well, Ryan, yeah. why don't you go put some clothes on now? Don't like what you see? <laughs> <laughs> my sire is downstairs. Please go clothe yourself. <laughs> I'll go and clothe myself. All right. Good luck. So Terry asked for permission to basically tell your sire that it's clear. Yes. All right. Yeah. So so I, I will head back up to Stephen's room where we did it and uh, yeah, you know take mine and her clothes. <laughs> <laughs> maybe maybe clean it up a little, make it look like you know. <laughs> Rather than have Stephen Sar come in, get into bed, and then just find a bra in there. <laughs> Come back down wearing only socks. All right. So, um, yeah, you're able to do that. With your obfuscate, you're able to do it unnoticed. Cool. Ah. All right. Um, now, so, does he come down wearing Lucy's clothes or his own? I don't know. I don't know. Let me find a coin. <laughs> All right. <laughs> It lands on its side. <laughs> I'm still naked. <laughs> we'll say I'm wearing my own clothes. All right. So, uh, yeah, you basically come downstairs to find Terry and Stephen coming in with uh, Stephen's sire, who you have met before. Um, Emily, correct? Yeah. What's she like? Um, pretty cold, uh, pretty scary. Um... She's just a very uh, authoritative and uh, intimidating woman. Okay, good to know. Ah, uh, question. Yeah? I was on four blood. How much blood am I on now? Um, at this point, let me roll a die for you since it's been some time. Well, if you land higher than four, what does that mean? <laughs> um, it means that you've gone out and fed from something. Oh. Of course, you were in Frenzy at the time, so who knows what. Hey, I've got good news. Oh. You're at six. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. All right. Okay. So. Sources. So, here's what we know. Jonathan is in San Antonio. Mm -hmm. Ryan has been here for who knows how long. Don't know where Derek is. Not yet, no. Okay. But apparently Slenderman came to my house again. Oh, yeah. That's what this guy says. That's what the naked man you That's found in your home said. said. Okay. He came all over your house. Okay. The naked man or Slenderman? Both. <laughs> anyway. All right. Uh, Terry also reports in that he, there's a message on the landline uh, from Modius. Uh, he is calling court for all the kindred in the city to come and discuss the fire. Yes, the fire. Um, yes. By the way, Ryan, this is kind of the first you've heard about the fire. Um, but basically, while you were crazy, um, someone set a fire in Gary. I look, as, oh. as I'm like, oh yes, the fire, I look over at Ryan, because I know it's either him or his stupid friend Carrie. I know they're involved in this somehow. You know, you can't just, you can't blame... Because of that whole gasoline Ryan, thing. because he was crazy and doesn't remember what he was doing at the time. So, I so just, he's innocent. Well, no, I just, I feel like he was involved somehow. Is the fire that thing that happened during, uh... 
Stevens Chronicle that I need to watch? Um, uh, no. Well, the fire is all something that's only come up at the end in a couple of these interludes. Um, all right. But yeah, there's a big fire coming through Gary. Like, it's burning down about half the city. I see. It started in basically the abandoned warehouses, so no one noticed it for a long time because the emergency services are so uh, underpaid. Um, they're having a big time. You know, time. we had that huge tanker of gas, if you remember. <laughs> <laughs> That's the other thing, is that the news is reporting that it is the tanker murderers who are responsible because... The they, tanker murderers. Because uh, apparently, like, a large amount of gasoline, they believe, was the uh, ig method of ignition. So, yes, by all means, let's go talk with Mobius about this. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't know that you're the tanker murderers. I did not murder anybody. The tanker murderers. <laughs> that's what the news has dubbed you. <laughs> oh, that's guts. So, I will ask Ryan if he has any idea where his friend Carrie happens to be. No clue. Yeah, the last time you Watch saw him, you, the last time you saw him, you fed him your blood, um, and that was right before Slenderman attacked mm -hmm. or whatever this thing is. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and he's been gone ever since. Just been ghoulized and is on his own. Well, I mean, we've been gone ever since. That's true. More like. All right. So anyway, uh, so yeah, when so is so he might just start the fire. Who cares? <laughs> who cares? It's the city of anyway. Um, <laughs> focus, Stephen. Focus. Do not get sidetracked by the crazy Malkavian. Just start one fire. Like seriously, come on. <laughs> when is when does Modius want us there? Um, immediately. The message was there a little while ago. It was giving you time to get ready, but since you've only come in the house now. Okay, well, I'm just saying, is yeah. it like midnight It's basically, it's whatever? immediately. Okay. Yeah. You're probably actually going to run a little bit late. Okay, well, and then I will, um, I guess explain to my sire that we yep. has asked us to <clears throat> attend and try and discuss, figure out how to end the fire. All right. She says, I will accompany you to present myself to the prince. All right, then. And, uh... Ryan, this is when uh, you get a, a message on your cell phone. Well, Lucy's cell phone. So you guys are all just kind of standing around, and then, like, some really sort of upbeat, girly music starts. <laughs> okay. Ryan looks around. Ryan checks. Pulls out a vibrating phone. Okay. We will all look at <laughs> at Ryan. So you're gonna answer it? Better answer the phone. Yeah. Alright. I'll be like, excuse me, and I'll leave the room. <laughs> Alright. So, uh, on the other end, it's a, uh, it's the, the voice of the older gentleman that you uh, met at the Chicago Chantry. And well, he says, uh, Mr. Farrell. Yeah. We have uh, information for you. Please hold on the line. And then he put, okay. you know, there's like some holding music. Uh, and then a little while later, uh, Nikolai picks up the phone. Who was Nikolai? Uh, the regent of the Chicago Chantry. He's the little right. kid. So he says uh, that he has an initial report on the creature that seems to be stalking you if you're ready to hear it. All right, what's up? All right. Well, based on your descriptions, it does bear a certain resemblance to a... Um, it's a German thing. It's like Der Grobman or something like that. But it's a very germany oh, yeah. sounding word. Mm-hmm. Uh, which is a fairy from the Black Forest in Germany. Um, which... Basically, it has all the appearances of what you've described and uh, was known to be uh, an abductor of children, which you would drag off into the woods for some reason. But then the children were, of course, you know, never seen again. Oh, yeah. So it's possible, because this is based on folkloric stories 
Um, no Tremere has ever encountered such a creature, so it's possible it's not actually a fairy and that the folklore is just, that's how they described it. It's also possible it could be a spirit or a demon. Um, but it does seem definite that it's some sort of extra-dimensional entity based on the powers that you have described. Okay. As a result, physical barriers are going to be ineffective. Okay. Um, based on what we've been able to determine based on your symptoms, it seems to be uh, emitting some sort of radiation, which is what's affecting you and your electronics in such a way. It's possible that it may also have used this sort of magical radiation to render uh, your gunpowder and lighter fluid inert. Okay. So, um, since it, if it is a fairy, uh, in that case, cold iron would be your best defense against it. Okay. If it's a fairy. All right. So, that's the initial report. Uh, the Chantry is still looking into it. All right. Good to know. All right. And Nikolai hangs that's up on your assistance. Okay, so um, I guess I'll head back in. Okay. Were you just like basically, and, uh, did you basically just like go through one door? <laughs> yeah. All right. So uh, you have Oz, uh, yeah, so you I was say, obviously I heard everything. to him, obviously. <laughs> so, um, hmm. so your sire did so as well, and she turns mm -hmm. to you and says, a member of your coterie has gone to the Chicago Chantry. It would appear so. I will leave you. Is this unacceptable? I will leave you to deal with the matter while I wait in the car. I understand. <laughs> Rolls out the stake. <laughs> so when you re-enter the room, Ryan, what you see is Stephen looking very perturbed. <laughs> Get over yourself. Come on. <laughs> I'm getting valuable information here. Ryan, I will say this once and once only. I'm going to take into the fact that I probably have never spelled this out clearly, but I am doing so now. Uh. Do not ever go to the Chicago Chantry for anything. Okay. We will not speak of this again. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. So, Ryan, it is at this point as you guys are heading out the door that you receive another summoning from Lucy. Again, there's no direction attached to it. God damn it. Steven, how would you prepare cold iron weapons? How What's you... cold iron? Is it different for, is it, does it actually just mean iron that's at a low temperature or is it something special? <laughs> Give me an intelligence plus a cult. Seven. Uh, cold iron is a little bit of a vague term, but it basically means any sort of... Um, it, it needs to be like a representation. It is iron, obviously, and it needs to be a representation of some sort of very cold, uncaring, mechanized, sort of civilized world because fairies are mm -hmm. weak to that. So, it's an iron object. Yes. It's, so, it's just, it's iron, it's just... And specifically, if you can make it somehow symbolic, that's, you know... So, uh, an iron bullet... would surely do the job, no? Um, yes, you could put iron in your, I would say, like, buckshot, like, iron buckshot might work. Alright, that's something. Iron knife. Do I have a cold iron knife? No. Not yet. Okay. I forget which Stephen I'm. Yeah. Where I'm at in my Stephen. Is there any, um, is, do we have any iron fencing, fencing in, in the, the house? house? 
Maybe some wrought iron. We probably have some wrought iron around. We might have to. If I could, lay out, if I could get like a stick of fucking wrought iron and just bend the guns and file it into a pointed stick. <laughs> Use that as my use that as a substitute staff. Um, I'm gonna say you don't have it on hand, but it's probably not too hard to get. I mean, I was gonna say we don't. I'm sure we have some sort of the gate. Yeah. What's the gate made out of? Um, I mean, yeah, you could dismantle part of the gate. You know. I mean, Do you mind if I dismantle part of the, the gate, Stevie? <laughs> well, we're on our way to Modius right now. I don't know how much time we have to dismantle a gate. Uh, but yes, we. Will I'll be super quick. quick. We will. Uh, if you want to take off one of the one of the iron rail. Uh, yes, things, exactly. Okay, okay. go right. to it. Well, Lickety Lickety split. Split. fortunately, we have a sheet to say how hard it is to get through <laughs> that gate. <laughs> okay. So let me look that document up. Now let, let me, me check, check Ryan's equipment. I remember I had a vice. I don't remember if I specifically wrote down that I had a uh, fucking like you have a long Jonathan break vice. Kind of thing. Ha 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 ha! Okay, I don't have a uh, like a fucking lock cutter listed. Mm -hmm. So that's so that's something onto the uh, to buy list. <laughs> I do, I do have, have a hand, hand vice and a sledgehammer that I could probably do. Alright. So give me a strength check. So, my strength is tree. And, and I will... I will boost it to five. Okay. Get those two extra blood points, now gone. Uh, yeah, with your potence you uh, are able to pull off a bar. Like, you really mangle the gate in the process. Like, it looks terrible now. But you've got yeah. an iron bar. Fixed, but whatever, we got an iron bar. All right, so I got a bar that clearly looks like it's off of a fence. That's pretty intimidating. <laughs> yeah. Sure. You should pull up a stop sign and use that. Shit, now that would be industrial. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. So, Derek. You still with us? Yes. All right. So you have been traveling around with uh, Art Morgan for some time. Uh, he's been basically teaching you uh, how to, you know, meld with the earth, how to be a gangrel, stuff like that. Um, after you've been with him for a little while, you hear a news report that says that Gary is on fire, uh, that the city's burning down. Um, Not in a good way. Either. Again, but you get all the information, like, you know, probably the tanker murderers. Um, and you weren't actually around for that session, so even in character, Derek probably doesn't know that the tanker murderers are definitely Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, so, yeah. Uh, and then a little while later, Art comes and tells you that uh, you have a meeting in Gary. And, uh, uh, what's the meeting? Who's the meeting with? Well, initially we're going to be meeting up with another clan member, and then we're going to be seeing the prince of the city. Oh, okay. All right. All right, let's do it. Yep, so he waves you into his beat-up hippie van and drives off down to Gary. First, you guys uh, drive. You have to be detoured to be skirted around the fire. Um, but you, uh, do, uh, come into the docks area, and there at sort of a place, um, for the, you know, loading and unloading, you go into one of the, the back offices, and there you find, uh, a man who I believe you would have seen at the party, uh, very, in the very first episode, uh, he was at the prince's party, uh, for New Year's Eve, but um, I don't think you talked to him at that time. Alright, um, so this is the dude that I need to meet with? Um, no, you're just basically tagging along with Art while he meets with him. Oh, okay, okay. 
So, uh, they come in and they just start to basically discuss clan business. Most of it you don't really understand. Um, but by the end of it, um, Art says that Inyanga is calling in a favor. And that uh, he needs to talk with the prince of this city in order to uh, have him agree to join with the alliance that is forming with uh, Deckard in... Milwaukee, which is the same job that you have with the Chicago Prince. Right. So uh, Lucian uh, nods, and uh, after they kind of ask you to leave the room, they talk in hushed voices for a little while. And eventually, when you come back in, you're invited back in. Uh, they've come to seem to have come to some kind of agreement, and Art tells you that uh, it's. Time to meet with the prince of Gary. All right, that's good. All right, so you guys get into your car and you head off to the prince's mansion, and you happen to arrive at just about the same time as Stephen and Ryan and Terry and a another woman who's with them and uh, seems very serious looking. So yeah, you guys have just arrived at the Prince's Mansion when you see this weird, beat-up old van pull up, and Derek gets out of it. Young Derek! I am glad to see that you are well. Yeah, uh, hello. I'm also glad to see you are well. And uh, out of the driver's seat gets this weird, kind of, aging, hippie-looking guy. I shall introduce myself. Uh, Dr. Stephen Higgins. Alright, he just says, uh, Art Morgan, and you can give me an intelligence plus politics. That's going to be four. Alright. So yeah, you're not sure, the name seems a little bit familiar to you, but you don't know where it comes from. Okay, and I will, um, make some small talk and... Ask where since last I saw Derek we were in a car being attacked by Slenderman. Um, I will say so. Where did you, where did you find my friend Derek? Uh, we ran into each other on the road. All right. Well, Derek, you'll have to uh, fill me in on your adventures since our last parting. Oh, I will. Perhaps first, uh, your sire says we should all go inside. Yes, of course. All right. So she ushers everyone inside. Um, and so while everyone is arriving there, uh, oh, Lucian came with those two as well. Okay, I'm just going to assume they're all gangrels at that point. <laughs> <laughs> Earth guy, he's a gangrel guy too. Yeah. All right. So, almost as soon as you guys enter, uh, Alicia approaches um, the players, um, and she seems pretty angry with you guys. As soon as she sees you, she demands to know, where, where is Jonathan and Lucy? Jonathan is safe. He is in San Antonio and making his way back here. Uh, I will oh, I tell her that. Um, uh I will look at Ryan and say, I, I am not entirely uh, sure where Lucy is at this moment. So Alicia immediately turns her attention on to you, Ryan, and says, where is she? What have you done with her? What have I done with her? So what haven't I done? <laughs> I tried my best to protect her. What does that mean? <laughs> that wasn't well, she's in, well, she's taken by Der Grossman. So she immediately turns back to Stephen and says, What is that? Alicia, there are many things happening currently. Jonathan and Lucy are part of some of them. There is also 
a fire, which, you know, uh, Modius has called us here to discuss. We are working on getting Lucy back safe and sound. Rest assured. We have, you know, we're, we're working on this. It, it will get done. So do not be frightened. All right. Give me a charisma plus empathy. Uh, that's three. <laughs> four. Four. That's four. All right. Not bad. All right. Well, she seems to come down a little bit. But then she says, um, don't think that you can just do whatever you want to members of Clan Toreador. Never. We remember such slights. And also, hopefully... <laughs> Is there a more insignificant clan than Clan Toreador? <laughs> they are the weakest and most pathetic of all the 13 vampire that's clans. What, that's what Stephen's thinking in his head. He does not say such things. <laughs> he humors her. Anyway, so I will continue to enter where Modius is. All right. Finally talk to a man. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So when uh, court opens, um, first order of business is Modius says, let's see, there are strangers here. Perhaps they would like to present themselves. So uh, your sire... Um, Basically, she sees Art, and she nods for him to have the preeminent place going first. Um, so, he steps forward and says, uh, Art Morgan, requesting permission to feed and uh, stay in your territory for now. So, uh, the prince kind of, he gives sort of, just sort of a slight bow, nod of the head. Mm -hmm. So, Modius stands up. And then says, I would be very honored to have such a guest in my domain. Uh, you are welcome to remain here as long as you wish. So, he then, our Morgan again just kind of nods and says, alright, thanks. And he heads back over to where uh, Derek and Lucien are. So, uh, your sire steps up, says, you know, uh, Emily of, uh, I don't have a last name for her yet, but Emily of Clan Tremere, and she begins reciting back your ancestors up until, uh, Merlinda, the member of the Council of Seven. And, uh, then kind of curtsies, and, uh, again, Modius says, of course, we would be very honored to have you within our domain for as long as you choose to stay. And so your sire curtsies again, and then says, and I am authorized to uh, offer the assistance of Clan Tremir in the uh, extinguishing of the fire which currently grips this city. And uh, so Modi says, of course, we would be a very grateful for any assistance which the learned clan Tremere can provide. Torios know how to suck up. Torios <laughs> do know how to suck up. They do, they do have that. To this city. <laughs> and the innocent kind threatened <laughs> by the fire. So, uh, she goes uh, back over to where you are. Um, at this point, Lucian steps forward, and he basically uh, offers the deal to the Prince of Gary that Derek is supposed to offer later on. Um, he says, calling in a boon which has been publicly granted to him, he requests the Prince assistance um, in establishing an alliance with Decker, the Prince of Milwaukee, against the Lupine threat. And anything else which might uh, threaten their collective domains. So, um, after a little bit, Modius, you know, says he will consider the matter. Doesn't want to give a decision immediately. So after this, the main business of the court opens. The prince says, as you know, there is a 
terrible fire which has gripped our city. This meeting has been called to find some means to deal with the aftermath. Uh, as prince, uh, I believe that a collective response from the kindred of this city is necessary. Therefore, I am establishing a uh, charitable fund for our kindred to contribute to, which will be acquiring uh, land and pay for the development of new uh, works to replace what has been lost. So the account will, of course, uh, bear in mind current investments if at some point in the future profits are to be made off of what is created. Um, but we are looking for people to invest money immediately with no immediate rewards as part of the kindred's duty to the city. So, um, no one really seems to be making too many moves right now, although um, Alicia, of course, steps forward and offers to assist. And after a quick consultation with Art Morgan, uh, Lucian steps forward and says he is also willing to assist. Um, and furthermore, he believes that... Uh, Perhaps some of the wider gangrel uh, may also be interested in rendering some assistance. Uh, due to, uh, he says, God, he looks back at our Morgan for just a second and says, due to the possible environmental concerns uh, as to what may be left once the fire is finished ripping through. So is there a pause now? Can I also offer? Yes. Questions? Of course I would, yes. You step so, forward? Yes, I step forward as well. All right. With my checkbook out or whatever it is. <laughs> it's just taking verbal oh, okay. agreements right now. They're probably going to wait for the fire to be actually out. Well, you know. If I need to give a symbolic amount of money, I can do so. All right. Um, so, uh, Michael, the uh, retarded Malkavian, also... Uh, just steps forward because he sees other people doing it. <laughs> um, and eventually, with that sort of movement behind, basically everyone, you know, agrees. Although, some people seem more enthusiastic than others. Well, of course. So, uh, after a little while, the prince says court is adjourned, but uh, I would request uh, to speak with of course, the esteemed Mr. Morgan uh, in private about some matters. And our kind of nods and says, he pats you on the back, Derek, and says, well, you're back home now, so I'm sure you can find your way around. I like the strong, silent type. <laughs> no yeah, lengthy goodbyes. I'm not the same. You we'll know, see each other again sometime. It's a being abandoned by the gangrel again. <laughs> this is you, Stalworth, by the way. What was that? <laughs> <laughs> Art pats you on the back. He says that you're back home now, so he's going to leave you. He knows you can find your way around. Um, and he says he'll be in contact at some point in the future. <coughs> Excuse me. I appreciate that, Art. All right. Well, yep, yeah, he heads out. And he goes and talks with Prince Mobius. All right, so is there anything else you guys want to do while you're here? Yeah. Oh, that's one, right. There's one other thing. Uh, before you guys leave, um, Prince Mobius does take... Uh, you aside, Stephen, right before he goes to talk with Art. And he says, I've noticed uh, Mr. Weiss does not seem to be in court. Um, he is uh, delayed in San Antonio for a few days. I understand. Um, there is one other quick matter I wish to discuss. It might be beneficial 
for our restoration efforts if we were to have the cooperation of the Prince of Chicago. Of course, I know that you are a life moon, but uh, I believe it would be more beneficial for the entire endeavor if he were to remain in your debt, since he could not then change his mind later and attack the project, given your own involvement. However, I understand that you are owed a deep debt of prestidigitation by the young Malkavian Ryan, mm -hmm. who is also owed a life boon by the prince. See. What? Why do I owe Stephen anything? Well, A, you owe him a life boon because Modius was going to kill you before Stephen intervened. Um, B, oh, yeah. He's All been right. giving you room and board for and, decades. <laughs> and employment. And no, it's work. Yeah, I've been... The life been for saving me, I'll grab that one. <laughs> All right. But the room and the board and the employment, you're not, you're not going to give that to Stephen? Employment! No, that's He employment. does work. Really? You think he does? Really? The room and I'm board. <laughs> Giving him his spreading around money, you know. <laughs> no, I don't need spreading around money. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I see. Um, I will see what I can do. All right. So, <laughs> yeah, even Cool Imp knows it's been a long time. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Channeling Terry there, he's he tired is, of your he's, shit. He's like, you know what, Ryan, you've been around a while. So yes, if you were to arrange that matter, I would of course then owe you an even greater favor. And we might also discuss the rejuvenation of the Jackson 5 Theater. I still have some contacts within my clan, which may be able to provide uh, entertainment at the theater for a very manageable price. Understood. Understood. Yes, I will. I believe I will. it's an ideal uh, arrangement as then everyone is just even with one another. And so he pats you on the shoulder and then he goes to talk to Art. All right, then. Alright, alright, alright. I'm done with my wheeling and dealing. <laughs> Try and put out the this fire before it, you know, burns down anything of real importance. <laughs> yeah. Meanwhile, speaking of cool imp actually, back in San Antonio, uh Jonathan, uh your plane right. has finally arrived. Alright then. Uh you're escorted basically to the departure point. Uh, the goon who's with you actually buys a ticket to get on the plane just to get further into the airport to make sure you are on the plane. They really don't like you. <laughs> Feels just like hell. <laughs> and uh, it takes off, no problem. So you were going to be <laughs> landing in uh, O'Hare Airport. Um, so you are going to be... I'm not sure the exact distance, but it's about an hour's drive away. All right, that's perfectly fine. All right. So I will, of course, politely thank my escort for his time. All right. He says, oh, and by the way, on account of the uh, shelter and uh, food, you owe the prince a minor boon. Mm-hmm. Late. Well, at least, at least you've convinced yourself of that I sing say to myself. <laughs> I, try, I, think, I think it, just to be safe. I don't say it, even whisper it. Alright. You think it, just so that he can hear that with his auspex, yeah? Yeah, auspex four. <laughs> Fuck off, I have that. No, I don't have that, actually. I have it level one. That's the other one, damn it. Wow. <laughs> well, whatever. Got to for myself. If he says that, then it was without my consent, and I feel no need to repay him that. <laughs> All 
All right. Yeah, I, I get on the I get on the plane and I leave. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck these people. <laughs> All right. Yeah, you get on the plane, and you take off. Glad nice. to finally be about to get back home. So. Uh. All right. So, yeah, you're in the plane. It's only going to be, like, a couple hours flight. Um, so you've basically taken off. You've reached your altitude. Um, the fashion seatbelt sign goes off, and you're just sitting there. Flight attendant comes by, asks, uh, you know, do you want anything to eat or drink? Oh, I assume you, you're good. flying first class. You've got the money. The f I feel I'd just be flying economy. <laughs> they, they, actually, they booked my ticket, didn't they? That's true. Yeah, you got the nicest, Ben. Neat. They all say no thank you. Alright. Yeah, so she goes back to the losers in uh, economy class. Those, uh, <laughs> the masses. Mm-hmm. While you, you know, sit back, relax. The tired and huddled masses. <laughs> you know, find whatever the latest Marvel movie is on, a. Uh, the in-flight movies, and just chill out. Uh, after a few minutes, though, there's a little bit of a commotion, and there's, like, you can hear someone, like, knocking on a door a little ways further back behind you, and then there's, like, someone's calling, you know, are you all right? And then you hear a door open, and then there's a scream. For fuck's sake. <laughs> So after a little bit, uh, a in-flight attendant comes on, basically asks if there is a doctor on the plane. Thankfully, I have no points in medicine, so I cannot accept that. All right. Yay. <laughs> oh, I don't contribute to society. Yeah, good. <laughs> Thank God. Not have to get involved. Good. Mm -hmm. All right. If that was me in that situation, I would think the same thing. Thank fuck I'm not a doctor. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, but you have a point in medicine. You at least know first aid. In character, yeah, sure. All right. <laughs> so, yeah, after a little bit, you notice that there doesn't seem to be anyone coming forward. Um, and there's just, like, a guy laying on the ground near the, the bathrooms. So... I'm gonna need... Maybe Jonathan is such a good actor. <laughs> I am actually... That I can pretend to be a doctor. We have actually already established in character that you guys know that in certain life-threatening situations, vampiric blood could stabilize someone. But it would turn him into a ghoul, right? But it would turn him into a ghoul. But seeing that no one else is intervening to uh, help, what is your humanity? Ah, oh, fuck. It's eight. I have to help this guy. <laughs> yeah. Why am I such a good person? <laughs> I'll say that I know some basic first aid and that I might be able to at least take a look at it. All right. So you head over, and um, just during your... I mean, you don't have any medicine, but I will give you a perception check just as you're trying to see if maybe... If there's a knife sticking out of his chest or something. Yeah. Like and, uh... Perception well, two. Well, here's your problem. Yeah. Um, it's this. It's the bullet wound. Yeah. So he actually seems really, really pale. And you did really well on the roll. You actually notice, even without medicine, that he seems to be really anemic. And as you're checking his neck, uh, you can see there are actually two puncture marks along his jugular. He's completely cold, unresponsive. You know enough to at least check for a pulse. Um, there's nothing right. there. It seems like he's fully dead. Remind me again. Does this not mean that if I give him a point of blood, he would turn into a full vampire? Yeah, if you were to give him a point of blood now, it would be a full vampire. He's already dead. So that's okay. not demanded by your humanity. That's a little bit much than... That, that feels... I wouldn't force that on him, no. Yeah. No, you're definitely... Yeah. Yeah, you're, you're better, better off dead than being one of us. Because he would be a Tory Well, you're better <laughs> off dead than being, yeah, you're better <laughs> off dead than being John's child, that's for sure. 
He would be he would be <laughs> fucked on multiple counts. He would be a 14th generation thin blood Toreador. <laughs> That's Jonathan Tiles specifically. specifically. For the people fuck, yeah. yeah. <laughs> what a nightmare. He would also be illegal since I haven't been given permission to have a child, so... You should totally make him a vampire, that'd be so fun to do it! <laughs> He's such a nice practical prank to put on him. Fucking <laughs> do it, I dare you! Just, like, right before he turns into the sunlight, just come out, hey, look, there are cameras right there and there. No, I absolutely will not do that. <laughs> oh, come on, do it. It'd be so yeah. funny. It would also be impossible to arrange, because this guy would wake up in frenzy on an airplane still. That would be so funny, though. You're making it empty. <laughs> <laughs> no, I won't do it. I won't do it. <laughs> no, I'll just say no. I think I think he's dead. All right. I'd like to he would show him for just a bit, just to be absolutely safe. The more important health card is to make sure no one else gives him blood. Alright. Well, also, clearly there's a vampire on board. Ryan points out the other thing. Um, clearly. Yeah, I'm aware of that, but I think you're... You might want to be uh, more concerned about such things. Especially because they... Especially because they already, like, don't care enough that they've just left a bloodless corpse with puncture marks on the neck. Mm -hmm. It was a masquerade violation. Actually, that is a good point. Uh, you're technically the only Camarilla vampire around that you know about, so you're sort of in charge of taking care of this masquerade violation. <laughs> the flight attendant this is still is standing like over a, your shoulder. Uh, okay, yeah, could, I somehow like cover up, could I somehow cover up the uh, bite wound at least? Uh, yes, you could uh, lick the wound closed. I think you can do that even if it's not your own bite. I don't know, if you, if you let it here, it's gonna be canon. <laughs> yeah, I'll allow it. Hmm. Now you just have to find a way to lick his neck to, to secretly. Lick, to lick the dead guy's neck, yeah, that's gonna be fun. Well, uh, obviously you want to get this dead guy out of the middle of the aisle, so you need to ask if there's a place where you can... Yeah, I'll do that. and to get, her, to get her away from the aisle, I'm asking that I will ask her if she could bring me some tissues. All right. So yeah. once I'm out of once I'm out of sight and she has gone away, I will lick the wound closed. Okay. Uh, give me a manipulation plus subterfuge. That is four. All right. <laughs> Would a calming aura help? Do you think? Um. Yeah. Sure. She says... No, I know you, the, the way you say that. Uh, I already saw the results of your first roll. She says, um, if there... Why would you need tissues? It's... There's no, like, blood or anything around. And um, she's kind of looking at the... It's, she's like, he's wounded on the neck, but... Well, he's not bleeding at all. All right, let's try something a bit more... Um... Let's try Auspex free, why don't we? Uh, so obviously, let's try Presence free. Entrancement. Right. So I'll like, grab on the shoulder. Miss, I really need those tissues right now. Please. Alright. So that's uh, Charisma plus Empathy, I think. Yep, yeah, and that's a 7, and I'm captivating. So I think <laughs> it would help you. Perhaps you haven't noticed how hot I am. <laughs> Perhaps you haven't noticed how hot this corpse is. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna lick it. Yeah, but you get to film it. All right. Yeah, you mess her up with presents. Uh, <laughs> she she um, wants to fuck you right here on top of this carp's now. Nice. So, uh, yeah, she she kind of nods, understands, and says, yeah, uh, of course. Thank you. And as soon as she's out of sight, I will then lick the wound closed. All right. So okay. she comes... Back with the tissues, and she says, right uh, you know, what, is he okay? Uh, we'll find out in a moment, won't we? I'll take this and I'll place it on his neck where the wound was. <laughs> <laughs> All right, yeah. Look, I'm trying. Okay, yeah, no, go with it. Very believable. And then whatever, uh, like, basic CPR I do know of, is like, 
basic study, whatever. All right. I'll attempt to perform on the corpse while the way it's the corpse. All right. Give me a manipulation plus performance. <laughs> uh, that's, uh, that's a free. Oh. <laughs> huh. Does that not have performance? I have one performance. You've only two manipulation. Yeah, remember when I made this character, I had five charisma, five appearance in manipulation. Oh, you're an idiot. This was my first character, okay? <laughs> Perhaps you haven't noticed how hot he is, though. <laughs> my first character was a hit. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, you start doing uh, movie CPR, so, like, none of his ribs break whatsoever. Um, because you're like, your arms are bending. <laughs> Um, but she doesn't seem to notice. Okay, good. She seems case, captivated. I'll, just, I'll, I'll say uh, I'm just gonna try to keep watching him see if he wakes up. All right. It's not like it's not real CPR unless the ribs break, okay? I mean, it's if your ribs aren't breaking, you're probably not doing it right. You're probably not pressing hard enough. But so you need the amount of pressure you need to be applying will break ribs. So what's happening now is we're gonna have a whole weekend at Bernie's where Jonathan sets his corpse <laughs> yeah. up next to him and like rigs the arms so it'll raise. Oh, he's fine now. Bring Just glass because of he's water. wearing sunglasses. <laughs> Look at him, my fedora. Yeah, it, that's exactly, he's going to dress him in the hat and the sunglasses. All right, well, I'll let you think about what you want to do with this while we go back over to the others. All right. So, um, you guys are free again. Um, and I will remind you, uh, LeBron still has not had any sort of oh. drug shipment. Crap, I should probably... And it's been, like, him. days yeah. since so then. I will, I will call him and um, have him come by and pick up the... Or I will drop off the, the pound or whatever I have Yeah. Uh, at the drop spot. And okay. I'll let him know that um, this is my new number. Or I'm, did I port my number over? Probably I ported my number over. Uh, anyway, so there's drugs there for him and he can get started. Sorry about the delay. You don't have anything to do with... The tanker murderers, right? No, of course not. All right, it's just... They started acting up right when you went incommunicado. Mm, completely unrelated. Coincidence. All right, I'll take the drugs. Okay. So you drop off just the drugs you have, yeah, the just have scattered one. around the haven. Yes, whatever I can find. All right. Yeah. So Terry is not happy about it, but he does contribute his personal weed supply. Thank you. For the cause. For the cause, my friend. And you just drop off a big assorted shipment. Do my best. <laughs> so, uh, all right. As, uh, who is, are you going to be doing the drop off personally, or are you going to be sending one of your employees to do it? Um... Apparently, in return for his salary, Ryan works for you, so... <laughs> Apparently he does. Um, so yeah. I, uh, the question is, does my sire need me for something at the Haven? Um, she's going to be preparing uh, her weather control spell, so she has to be left alone. Okay, so I am free, because that's the only thing yeah. that would keep me. Um, so, she uh, says, stay off of the top floor of the mansion. Very stay good. out of the library. All right. Um, so I guess... I'll quickly get any drugs we have up there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That'll be the first place to go. Then we'll gather them tomorrow world. Um, so then, uh, so then I might as well go out. I don't really have anything else to do. All right. I'd like to try and get a look at what this fire is. Okay. So as, um, so were you dropping them off? Yeah. Well, Terry will be driving. Okay. So you're all going. Yeah, if Ryan wishes to come as well. We should probably locate Carrie. I would like to locate where he is and just, and just, you know, all right. stabilize him. Yeah, all right. So the plan is basically to take the, are you taking Derek with you too? Uh-oh, you, does Derek want to come? I don't know if he was off with his new, with his new gang. Yeah, he left with him with Modius. He said, you know, you're back home. All Patted right. him on the shoulder. All right. So, uh, so I guess if Derek came home with us. Um, then yeah, he's welcome to come too. I don't know, Derek, are you going with him? 
Uh, yeah. Or do you want to stay in the haven with my creepy sire? Uh, I think I'll go with you. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, so, uh, yeah. You guys all meet up. Um, get in the car. Okay. Head out. Drop off your drugs. Um, and as you're making the drop off, uh, Ryan, you receive another summoning from Lucy. This time, however, you can sense a direction. Oh. Well, where is it? Um, I mean, it's a direction. So, you can point off the direction towards it. You just shout out, go that way! Lucy's that way! Alright. Alright, well, that's enough for me. You good? Well, good. Go, right. go, Terry. Terry starts driving in that direction. And uh, you guys start to notice there seems to be something on the horizon. It's obviously the red... The red glow of the, the fire. The red glow of the fire. Uh-huh. You guys are heading directly into it. Well, okay, I didn't want to get an idea of the size. Um, so, is Lucy in the midst of the fire? Because that could be bad. Um, well, you guys are able to drive up all the way to where the... So, in order to stop it, basically they've decided they can't stop it, so they've just set up fire breaks okay. um, and are going to let it burn itself out. Um, so you get to where the fire breaks are and where the police have basically cordoned off the area. You know, don't go any mm. further, and Ryan's still telling you it's that way. Ryan. Hmm. Oh, we still have no noise. No noise. I'm not watching the green light. Um. <laughs> so. Well, ideas, guys. I really am not inclined to walk into a raging inferno. Mm-hmm. Just saying. Lucy's probably it. not inclined to remain in well, I a mean, raging inferno. Was the was she panicked in her summons? I, you know, because <laughs> I is she actually in there? I mean, you couldn't sense a direction before. Maybe you're sensing a wrong direction now. Nah, How it's that way. Work? It's that way. I I just know. That's how someone works, isn't it? Pretty much, yeah. Um, I know she's that, way. Through uh, the first stages of your blood bond, you can also... Um, you get a real sense that she seems to be near you now that you're here on the edge of the fire. <clears throat> okay, but we can't walk into a fire. Not everything past the fire break is on fire. Like I said, this is the area that they've cordoned off just to make sure that it will burn itself out. But not every building past there is on fire yet. All right. So, all right. So we've still got a general direction. Obviously, Ryan can obfuscate. Um, are there, like, people patrolling the fire break? Would we be able to sneak through it? There are people patrolling, but because they're so understaffed, you could get through. Could they're basically through. just patrolling around, you know, with All as right. many people as they can, but... Alright, well, we'll, uh, we'll pretend to be patrolling as well. And you can see there seem to be, like, looters and things going back and forth. Okay. Alright, well, let's give it a whirl, I guess, when the right. opportunity arises. Let's... They have set up stuff so you can't get your car through. You're going to have to proceed on right. foot. Right, no, I figured yeah. we were going to have to leave the car here and, and go on foot. Alright. So, um... Harry basically takes out, like, a rag, um, and fishes out a bottle of water, and basically wets it down and then ties it over his face. Good. All right. Rest will cease to breathe. And, um, all right, you got your iron with you, your rot, your, your <laughs> iron bar, Ryan? Ryan, do you have your oh, iron? Yeah. Okay. I got it. All righty. Um, and I'll have my gun. And we'll go see if we can find Lucy. All right. So, you guys head forward. So we're going to cut back quickly to uh, Jonathan. So you've just kind of been sitting there for a little while. And um, you hear uh, the flight attendant. Uh, she comes up to you where you are. Um and says that they've found in the back um, there's someone else has passed out. 
going to have a oh, collection no, of corpses. She says it's the same symptoms. Is it contagious? No, I don't believe it's that. I'm not a doctor, but I play one on TV. <laughs> <laughs> Show me to him, please. All right. So she takes you to him. And so now that you know what to look for, yeah, it's exactly the same thing. Someone has drained him completely. All right. At this point, I think I'll activate all of the aspects just to be to see if I can like keep an eye out if this happens again. Yeah. For suspicious behavior in general, if I can. Um, and needless to say, you have a very uncomfortable feeling of like being watched when your odd specs is on. Mm. Like, there's nothing specific, but you're getting that sort of, you know, spider sense tingling sensation. Well, that's a good thing since they're looking at me and not potential victims. Well, well I should say. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, you're not mutually. No way you could be the victim of anything ever. Allow me to rephrase that. <laughs> Sure. I know which potential victim they are looking at. <laughs> you too. And it's yourself. Yeah. So well, what do you easier. do with that information? It is easier to protect myself than it is to protect a bunch of strange people. Or strangers, rather. Strange people. Strange people. <laughs> what do strange people do? Who knows? You're the strangest person on this plane. You're even stranger than the serial killer right now, <laughs> right? Look, I can't know English so good, okay? <laughs> <laughs> It's my second language. Give me a break. I'll give you a break. It's all right, boss. Thank you. Right. So, uh, I'll attempt right, to cover this body. You're an idiot. <laughs> okay, there we go. <laughs> I'll attempt to cover up this body, same as the last one. Okay. Uh, just give me a quick uh, wits plus stealth on this one. Wits plus stealth. Uh... Oh. <laughs> Do you think I can use the other room instead? <laughs> no. There's just like a couple of passengers that are just kind of idly, curiously kind of looking over the seats. Um, so you just need to avoid them. It's, With it's your wits plus stealth. It's a two. All right. Will PowerPoint, will PowerPoint. I don't have many left. <laughs> Spend a blood point. On what? On his endurance for when he gets attacked by yeah, the serial killer who's looking at him. It's a good point. Of course, he only has five blood points, so he risks going into frenzy and then becoming another problem on the plane. Right, well, there's all me. You know what that means. No witnesses. Yeah. Uh, yes, you are able to lick the wound and no one right. yells anything. Okay, but I changed my mind. It is contagious. You're all infected. I'm sorry. <laughs> So the one cure. <laughs> okay, so I'll just keep a watch over these two, and hopefully the strange feeling of being watched does not subside. All right. If it does, I will attempt to figure out why and who left their seat, etc. Okay. You're just going to kind of keep an eye out. Yeah. All right. All right. So we will switch back over to the others. Oh, by the way, remind me, does do wounds heal over time, or do I have to spend blood? Um, you have to spend blood points. Damn it. Yeah, so, you, that's right, you're burned up too, I forgot about that. Yeah, I'm at minus two points. Alright. So, um, you guys get to the fire break, it's pretty easy to time your movements to get past when there's no one else around. Um, so yeah. Okay, so we'll follow Ryan, I'll let him lead the way. Alright. He knows. Yeah, so you're able to lead these guys through, and as you get, I mean, on the edge of the fire break, there are a lot of looters and things, obviously, taking stuff that's going to be burned down. Um, but as you're further in, obviously, no one wants to get that much closer, um, and even Terry, through his mask, starts, you know, coughing um, from the smoke inhalation. Um, now that you're this far in, though, you do see one guy just, like, run across the street, like, a couple blocks down from you. And you haven't seen anyone else this deep in for a, a little while. Hmm. Who's that guy? Oh, and suffice to say, like, all of your frenzy difficulties are increased further. Oh, yeah. I'm sure <laughs> um. Um. 
All right, so I auspex the guy. It's a guy? Do I... Yeah, give me a uh, perception plus empathy. That's four. Yeah, he was too far away and ran too quick. You couldn't see anything in his aura, but he looked like a person. Okay. All right. Well, is Ryan, is he heading in the direction that Ryan is leading us, or is he going in the um, other He direction? is in that direction, although he was running across the street, so he's running perpendicular to it. Okay. Well, odd. I guess I'll just keep following Ryan. All right. I'm really getting uncomfortable. Is he still going toward the fire? Uh, yeah, Ryan, the summoning is still leading you further uh, into the fire. Okay, this is, I'm not comfortable with this. Yeah, it seems to be in such a way, really, I mean, by the nature of the fire break, there's nothing really around you right now, because you're in one of the cleaner areas, but it seems like it's basically pushing you almost into the center of a U sort of shape. No, it's going to go behind <laughs> us. It's going to go behind us. It's a trap, Ryan. It's a trap. All craft pull up. Ryan. David. I bet David went to get dinner. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm concerned about Terry because he can't breathe, so I don't think he should go any farther if we do decide to go farther. I'm going to have to tell him. Right. So do you, back. do you want me to tell your sire what's... Yeah, because this is a trap, Terry. That's what this is. All right. God. Good luck. Yeah. All right. All right. So. Oh, um, Terry did bring, like, the fire extinguisher from the car, so he hands it over to you okay, if you want you. it. I was going to say, do I have anything, but not that it's going <laughs> to... Yeah, you're in the middle of the city on fire, but... Um, you know, but I might be able to spray... If spray you need to get out of a building or something... my fire quenching ritual. Derek's with you. Yeah, he doesn't have a fire quenching ritual. <laughs> he is not a fire quencher. Derek, do you have fortitude? Stalworth? Stalworth. <laughs> Great, everyone's going to get dinner. I know. In that case, I think I'll get something to drink. <laughs> God damn it, Miles! Actually, well, if, the, if everyone if everyone else is gone, I might as well go get my something. Actually, to, uh, it looks like David yeah. must have gone completely. He must his internet must have gone out because he's completely offline right now. Uh, yeah, it seems that way. All right. Okay. So um, we'll take a quick break then, and wait for everyone to get back. Wait. Remember to cut this out when you record. Yeah, obviously. <laughs> okay. Hmm. So yeah. I've returned. All right. <laughs> I figure we'll just do, uh, we'll just go through your story to completion, and um, hopefully everyone will be back by then. All right. All right. So, uh, as you're uh, just sort of... Actually, hold on. Uh -huh. You can still send text messages and such. I don't have my phone. Fuck. <laughs> Also, like, David's just completely offline, so. Hmm. Yeah, weird. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe a power outage? That's what I was thinking. The shoddy Irish infrastructure. Or he had a blue screen of death or something. Yeah, could be. Alright. So, uh, let's see. Yeah, so you're just, uh, you know, on the plane for a little while. And basically, you start to hear, like, whispers around, and uh, eventually the flight attendant comes up to you and says that people are, you know, getting very nervous based on what's happened. I'd they, be very surprised if they weren't. They might feel better if maybe, you know, a doctor reassured them.
Could you perhaps tell the captain to make a statement that it's not contagious at all, it's a closed incident, and there is nothing to be afraid of? Um, she says, well, I mean, I could just put you on the intercom. Why, <laughs> Uh Well, this is, in love with you. this is the double-edged blade of your entrancement. Well, hmm. I think I prefer to stay here and watch over the bodies, just in case they wake up. Mm-hmm. Um, all right. She goes back and uh, goes up to the uh, to talk to the captain. Just to test this, uh, like premonition, have of being what does it fade when she leaves? Um, it is fading around that time. Yeah. Hmm. And then a little while later, uh, she comes on the intercom, basically says there's nothing to worry about. And then from the back of the plane, um, you hear more cries. God. Aren't I at the back of the plane right now? Um, well, you're in first class, so I, I guess you would have probably... I mean, you had one body up in the first class bathrooms, and you had one body in the back of the plane, which you would have had to have moved. So I assume you would have moved it back to your seat, probably. It's a little less, there are fewer people there. Okay, well, uh, I think I'll immediately have to investigate the screen against my adjustment. All right. So yeah, it's back in uh, the more crowded economy area, and there's another uh, dead body there, just like the others. Then I'll ask immediately, uh, just to whoever is nearest, did you see anything right now? Um, they said that they, you know, they didn't, but they weren't looking directly over there uh, at the time. How odd. Did you see them leave their seat? Um, they said that, you know, they don't, they thought maybe there was uh, someone sitting right next to the guy. Um, but they don't really remember what he looked like. Just very nondescript. Hmm. Right. Thank you for your compliance. And I'll exude a calming aura. Mm hmm. I believe the role for that is uh, charisma plus empathy, was it? Uh, yes, I think so. Yeah, that's a seven blood that'll do. All right. Yeah, so you start to exude your aura. Okay. In case I will immediately, while people are calmed down, try to hide the wounds they as before. Okay. And I will remain on the lookout for whoever did this. Okay. So uh, you guys are actually, by this point, getting close to uh, O'Hare. Basically, the pilot is putting it into a descent. Um, and obviously they're asking everyone to stay on the plane because the authorities on the ground are going to be detaining you for a little while. They're quarantined. Mm hmm You know, I think I'll go protect the pilot. Uh-huh. I think um, that might be a good idea. Yeah, so he says not to worry, though. Um, they say, you know, the authorities on the ground are saying it shouldn't take longer than, you know, midday or so to check everyone out. Oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> so, the plane starts going into his descent. He asks everyone to go back in their seats, fasten their seatbelts. Okay. I will reluctantly do so. Alright. So yeah, you get into your seat, which is like a window seat. Um, and after a little bit, though, you notice there's someone who's sitting next to you. All right. I assume they didn't do that before. Uh, they were not there before. Right then, I don't recognize them. Uh, no, it is uh, a smallish, about five foot tall, uh, woman. Hello there. She says hiya. You've been busy, huh? Been trying to see what you would do about it. I gotta say, though, I'm not too impressed. 
Uh-huh. I thought the cam were all about protecting the masquerade, but it looks to me you've just been collecting bodies. Mm-hmm. I bet you got a plan to get out of here once we land, right? Of course. All right. Well, me too. I wish you luck. And she vanishes. Mm -hmm. What a surprise. Is this your master sort of way of telling me to level up my aspects? <laughs> uh, if you have leveled up your aspects, you might be able to see her. If I it's absolutely her. refuse just on ethical background now. <laughs> All right. So the uh, it's a little bit, and the plane lands. You don't see obviously the strange vampire again. Um, but as soon as you're landed, obviously you know airport security is there and takes everyone into quarantine. And uh, yeah, so you're just left waiting why there with a bunch of. Why are they taking me there? Is there how many officers are doing this? Um. I mean, you're all being led there as a group, so there is, you know, uh, like, you know, four or five security escorting everyone from the plane. Okay, the one escorting, like, my group, by doing it in groups, like one group of five being escorted by police no, officers? No, it's all so? just together, pretty much. Damn it. Uh, if I were to approach one of them and I explain to him that I was the one who was uh, performing emergency uh, CPR on the bodies on the plane, mm -hmm. uh, could I maybe convince him that I'm a doctor and I need to see patients immediately? That I was here in a hurry, that's why I'm taking the late plane. Good plan. <laughs> Give me a manipulation plus subterfuge. That is a four. Using presence. So he looks over at you, and he kind of smirks at you and says, uh, "Nice try, cupcake. We're taking you. We're taking you to see the boss." The boss. Oh yeah. The fuck do you mean by the boss? You'll see. And uh, he leads you. For I suppose I will. At this point, he and another guy, and you notice now that these guys for airport security actually seem better armed, like they've got, like, better gear on. And they both take you aside on your own, away from everyone else. Oh, nice, wonderful, beautiful. <laughs> Jonathan, you sound annoyed. <laughs> I'm having a swell time. And they take you out into a back room where there's a woman waiting for you. Not the really woman nice. from the plane. Someone else is very nice. Uh, give me an intelligence plus politics. Uh, that would be four. Um, you have never met the woman before, but you do know that O'Hare Airport is the territory of one of the Bruja Primogen, Tyler, who is supposed basically meets this woman's description. All right, then. So it's one of the elders and Primogen of Chicago. Good evening, ma'am. Good evening, Mr. Weiss. I see introductions are not necessary. I hope you have a very convincing explanation for exactly what happened. Well, have you ever heard of a woman by this description? And I'll describe the person in the plane as best as I can. All right. She says no. In that case, no, I don't. <laughs> she is supposedly a sabbat, I would assume, mm -hmm. since she was talking about how she wanted to test how the Camarilla handled these situations. Mm hmm. What she meant by that, apparently, was that she was going to commit murder and see how I handled covering it up. So, it's the old Sabat ate my passengers excuse. I see. It's such a classic. <laughs> Says, well, uh, needless to say, I have quite a bit of work to do. We have three 
dead bodies without blood. No puncture I wounds. I covered up the bite wounds at least. At least. You, uh... Oh, David's back, finally. I'll um, bring him in. So, oh, wait, I can't bring him in on Skype, but... Hopefully he'll come in. There we go. No, Star Wars shows back up. David? Oi, David. Hello? There we go. Can you hear me? Sounds really weird. Yeah, your audio. So so my tablet ran out of power, so I (laughs) I emergency installed Discord on this laptop. (laughs) Okay. I didn't even know if this laptop was gonna have an onboard mic or not, like. (laughs) <laughs> well, you're back just in time to hear Jonathan get roasted. Oh, brilliant. Yeah, he landed mm-hmm. in the domain of one of the Chicago Primogen on a plane with three dead bodies. Hilarious. <laughs> Classic, Jonathan. Do you know what would have been better, though? Mm-hmm. If he landed with three new, new children... <laughs> That would unironically have been a better option, I think. (laughs) Alright. So, she says, I will handle the matter from here, as I don't believe we'll need any further assistance from you. Uh, You will, of course, need to be detained until the prince can decide the matter. Mm -hmm. As of right now, there is no evidence that I can find of any Sabat on the plane. Hopefully, for your own sake, such evidence comes to light. Mm -hmm. All right. Anything else you want to say to me? No, uh, you don't need to be concerned, however, uh, because we will have shelter prepared for you here at the airport. Of course, you will owe myself a minor boon. I don't respond. In fact, a rather major boon, considering all the work I have to go through cleaning up the mess on your plane. Well, since we can apparently just decide who owes who boons, I'm going to decide that you owe me free life boons for covering up the masquerade three times, and I obviously don't say that. <laughs> it's almost like the elders can just decide whatever they want, and then you get fucked over. Almost. Uh-huh. Yeah, it's weird how that works. <laughs> Fucking hate these people. All right. So after a little while, um, you do get a call um, from a from an individual. He says, uh, "Greetings. This is Mr. Quinn, Mr. Heath Quinn. This is Jonathan uh, Vice speaking, and this is the phone that was handed to you by a a grunt, basically here." All right. Yes, that's correct. Hold a moment, please. And. Uh, you know, like holding music plays on the phone. And then uh, you hear Prince Loden on the other end. Hello there. Greetings. I understand you have uh, had an incident on a plane journey. I have indeed. I've been framed for murder, it would seem. You are currently being held by the Bruja Primogen? That is correct. I believe you might be able to help me with this. Is that not why you've called? He says, I can in fact assist you. You... Wonderful. Give me your solemn word, of course, that it was not you responsible and that you did your best to uphold the masquerade, yes? I swear on whatever you wish for me to swear upon. All right. I accept your oath and I will intervene on your behalf with the Primogen who holds you captive. You have my thanks and my gratitude. She will not, of course, be extracting any sort of recompense from you. I will make that very clear 
when I speak with her. Wonderful. And, of course, though, Mr. Weiss, you understand that we are now even. Indeed. I was expecting as much. All right. So, he hangs up the phone on you. Excellent. So, give me a second. Mm -hmm. Um, so you're basically taken care of by Tyler, and she arranges a vehicle for you to take into Gary. Okay, does she, like, call me into her office again or anything? No, she just basically says it through goons. She says, you know... They just come up and tell you you're free to leave. God, I was really hoping she would, like, call me in again so I could look at her with the most smug fucking expression. <laughs> ha! I lost my life, Boone. <laughs> well, like, I wasted your time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I will gladly accept and I will head to Gary. Alright. Oh, and uh, I forgot to mention this, but the prince will also speak with uh, the prince of San Antonio to square matters with her as well. All right. He did owe you a full life boon, so he is willing to basically make the problem go away completely for you. I greatly appreciate that. All right. So, uh, now we're back with the, uh, the fire crew. All right, David, we are being herded into a trap. David? Hello? There we go. Okay. All right, yeah, herded into a trap. Sounds good. No, <laughs> no, I've sent Terry back. So I'll bring you up today. I'm not sure exactly when you ran out of power. Um, basically, the area you're in isn't on fire right now. Um, but you're getting further in. There are no more looters around you. You just saw one weird maniac who's running further in ahead of you. Um, and it, the fire basically is kind of forming a U-shape within the firebreak area, and you're in the open part of it, but you are being driven directly into the middle. And then they're going to close it behind us and burn us up. This is not a good idea. Oh, boy. So I am counseling that we don't walk into the U-shaped trap. <laughs> and you guys just keep walking anyway. <laughs> so, uh, again, Stephen will stop. He will stop and he will say, Ryan, this is unwise. That Ryan has a conniption. I don't know what that means. I don't know. I think David's still sorting shit out. No, well, he's attempting to. Yeah, speak. we're hearing beeping sounds. I'm not sure if he's trying to talk and we're just not hearing him, or... No, it lights up, but there's no sound. For the record, I am also only hearing the beeping. Alright, good. Each David not to, you know, plug in his tablet. Can you hear me now? Yes. And now we can hear you. Okay. So. I was lagging for a while. Okay. So Stephen is is not walking into the U-shaped trap, and he is telling you it is unwise. <laughs> walking into something unwise is all I heard there. Okay. Sounds good. <laughs> I feel like that's Ryan's actual experience. Yeah, like, yeah that feels like something you. Ryan would say. <laughs> it, it feels it feels like he only gets every other word when you're talking to him, and yeah. you're never quite sure if he fully understood. So, all right, so this is normal. All right. 
So are you going with him? No, I'm not, I don't, he's just, he's going to just keep going. I mean, I assume so. Lucy's still in there. Somebody needs to stay on the other side for when the thing closes to help the person get out. I mean, that's Terry and your sire, right? My sire is back doing a ritual. She's not going to be any help. Mm -hmm. He can't, he can't interrupt her. <laughs> what exactly are you planning on doing, though? Oh, well, I don't know. I have my little rinky fire. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. But I don't know what I'm going to do if I walk into the inferno either. It's true. That just seems stupid to me. Yeah. I'm going to wind up all scarred and, and, and burned and dead. Of course, I'll you're, wind up for dead. your friend is going in there. I, is Derek going in? I don't know, Derek. Derek? I don't know. Is Derek Sawa, are you back? I'm not seeing anything from Sawa. Isn't it lovely that the one time we were all on time, we have massive technical issues? Yeah, yeah of course. You know, it's, that's just the way it is. All right, so Stephen just turns around, walks back, gets in the car and drives away. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if you want to. Leaves Ryan to his death. What's your uh, humanity rating? It's uh, six. All right. Um, <laughs> you wouldn't degenerate. Although, it wouldn't help you buying any more. Yeah, I know. Well, I don't know what to do. I, okay, I, I, I uh, admittedly, not fond of fire. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. No. So, like, can I even walk into this? I mean, am I gonna... Uh, uh everyone I, is going to need to make courage rolls. So. <laughs> Depends on how many testicles of courage you have. You all. I hate you all. Um, nothing. I have nothing of any use for this situation. Mm hmm. I highly doubt it's probably that maniac guy running around mm -hmm. that's doing the summoning anyway. It's not even Lucy. Mm hmm. And then Stephen does the damn it and goes <laughs> after Ryan anyway. All right. Uh, so if Derek isn't going to say anything, hello, Thalworth, anything? All right. So I'm just going to assume he basically hangs out near enough that he can run up to you if he turns up. Otherwise, just kind of stays out of the way. Hello. David, yes. Yes. Yeah, I think it's getting better now. All right. <laughs> sure, we'll go with that. Uh, you're walking in so, on yeah. fire. Is that what we're doing? Whatever. No. So whatever you you think I was gonna do, let's do that. All right. So give me a courage roll. Five. All right. The manly men. Mm -hmm. All right. And Stephen. Four. Wow, actually, yes. Both of you are able to go through no problem. You guys nut up. Yeah. Like yeah, some well. big goddamn heroes. <laughs> yeah, I, I've been in war, all right? So, I've been in a war as well. Exactly. Yeah. And so, all right. This is when, this is when, this is when we, uh... Yeah. So, yeah, as you guys are heading forward, you see the maniac... Uh, figure, he sees you guys, and he runs up to you. He starts running towards you, like, arms okay. pumping directly at you. Is he aggressive, or is he scared, um, or is... He's what moving is he... with determination. Determination. To right. do something. Determination. So I will, I will get into a karate stance. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'll have my gun ready. Alright. I'm not sure what this guy's doing. I've got this. So when he gets close to you, uh, you can finally see through the smoke and everything that it is Carrie. It's Carrie. Well, we found Carrie. I yell at Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> we did find him, yes. He says, burn it out. What? He said what? He says, burn it out. What, the fire? The thing. It doesn't like fire. 
Oh, the bees. Burn it. Oh, you're a ticko. You know that. Oh my goodness, he started this fire to kill the uh, to kill the thing. Well, that was misplaced. Um, heroism. <laughs> <laughs> It doesn't like fire, though. That's useful information. Yeah, that is useful yeah. information. Um, I don't know. <laughs> the <laughs> ranting meth head <laughs> with Mulcahy and Vite said so. All right. Well, um, we should probably get Carrie out of here. Mm-hmm. What's the summoning situation with Lucy? Still feeling it. Like going It's still that way. Into the inferno. Yes. Okay. Yeah, let's go. All right. Um... God, I don't want to take Carrie with us, but I don't see any other choice. Uh, Derek is still in uh, that general can area. Derek, get him back to, to yeah. Terry. Stallworth's not around. Can I assign one last that try? To him? Stallworth. At all. Seems like he's not. No. All right. All right. So I will assign yeah, Derek will. to taking Carrie. Oh wait, oh, Stallworth. Wait, Stallworth. Oh, turn. There we go. He's oh, back. Oh, he is back. So you've woken up. Okay. So. <laughs> Okay, so are you aware of what is happening right now? Um, to be honest, no. Okay, uh, <laughs> like we I are around the time y'all rolled for something. Okay, so we uh, we're uh, you know Gary's on fire. So uh, Ryan received a summoning from Lucy, which led us down to the inferno. Um, we are getting closer and closer to it. We're in the fire break zone that they're trying to use to stop the fire, uh, but we have to actually go into the fire, apparently. Um, I've sent Terry back to the car. We've now run into Carrie with a C, which is Ryan's ghoul. So with he's, a K. Oh, is it with a K? All yeah. right. Anyway, uh, he's Ryan's ghoul, so he's a meth head ghoul of a Malkavian, so he's just flat out nuts. Uh, apparently... He's started this fire in order to kill Slenderman. Um, but okay. he is just a human, and he should probably not... And he's crazy. Um, and he probably shouldn't be with us. So, um, But Ryan wants to continue on in toward the Inferno, and Derek's going to have to make a courage roll now uh, if yeah. he wants to come with us. So your choice are you either come with Ryan and Stephen to try and find Lucy in the midst of the fire... Or you could take Carrie back to Terry. Um, to be apprehended. To be apprehended and keep him under control so he does not cause more damage. Mm. Well, I'll, uh, I'll take a Carrie back to Terry. <laughs> All right. In true Derek fashion. Give me a strength <laughs> plus brawl roll to see how well you okay. just kind of subdue this guy and carry him with you. All right. Um... That is seven. All right. Yeah, so you basically just lift up this spastic meth head white guy like a doll and just, like, throw him over your shoulder. Fireman, carry him out of there. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, yeah, so he's just, like, he just keeps screaming, burn it out, as uh, right. Derek drags him off. All right. Okay. Good. Good to know. Okay, so... I guess we head on in. Apparently this was the tanker murderers that started this fire. All right. <laughs> the tanker murderers. <laughs> All right. All righty. So yeah, Stephen and Ryan head further in. Um, as you're getting... Ah, go get, team. As you're getting closer... Um, you feel like the wind pick up. Yeah, and it's closed behind us. I, I, I knew <laughs> this was going to happen. Well, you don't know it's closed behind you. You haven't tried to escape yet. Yes, well... But maybe well, if you did try and escape, it would. Yes, so the wind picks up. Okay, we're now trapped in here. Find Lucy. Damn it, Ryan, now. Okay. All right. Yes, so right on the edge of the fire, you can see there is an apartment building, and out the window... Um, when she sees you, um, there's a woman yelling out for help. Again, it's hard to see uh -huh. each other. You just make out, like, figures through the smoke. Okay. Oh, it's Lucy, isn't it? It feels like it. That's directly the location the summoning is coming from. Okay. All right, let's get that bitch. 
Is the apartment building on fire? Yes, it is partially on fire. Okay, um, it's probably easiest if she just jumps down to us. The Actually, the area that she's out this, the window the is more engulfed in flames down below. below so it would be window. easier to come up from the other side. We'll so you've covered the... that response since uh, Miles. Hey, yeah, fuck you, Miles. You piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> jump out. Yeah, if she's a vampire. She can tuck and roll. It'll be fine. I could. Begging your, begging your pardon. <laughs> fine, we'll go in. All right. So yeah, you head up the stairs, um, and when you reach the door, you find it's locked. All right, all right. <laughs> Do your thing. Bust it open. I'll kick that fucking door down. Alright. Strength? And, um, I got my, uh, wrought iron fence ready, by the way, for slamming oh, yeah. on the other no, side. Oh, yeah. No, definitely. So my strength is three. Okay. Alright. Yeah, so you basically just kick the door in, you know, you follow it inside... Um, and the the force, however, of the kick seems to have actually destabilized something in the building. As soon as you stumble through the doorway, the roof overhead collapses right behind you, blocking the doorway so Stephen can't get to you. Oh. There's flaming debris in the way. You might be able to... I will whip out my fire extinguisher <laughs> and... <laughs> <laughs> All right, but you are inside of this apartment, and uh, Lucy immediately runs up to you and embraces you. She said, I knew you'd come for me, and she, you know, gives you a big kiss. Yeah, obviously. But we don't have time for that. we got to get out of here. <laughs> yeah, not right now. <laughs> so. Throw her out the window. <laughs> Stephen, well, well. the Malkavian network, you hear it whispering to you. <laughs> so, Stephen, you're trying... I mean, to uh, put out yeah, the fire okay. there. Uh -huh. um, and Ryan, you can see that. Um, it's it's starting to go. It's going to take a little while. Um, mm -hmm. And then there's another kind of like shaking sensation. And then part of the roof in, or part of the floor rather, in the apartment collapses in down into an apartment below. From what you can see, Ryan, it looks like this is a possible way out because this room doesn't seem to be on fire yet. And you can see the door that would lead outside again. All right, so, I will communicate this to Stephen and I'll give it a shot. All right. So I'll jump down first. Yeah. I'll try the door to the apartment. Does it open out? All right. So you jump down. First, give me okay. a uh, dexterity plus athletics. Dexterity plus athletics is... Yes. Um, how long does it take to take my armor off? <laughs> um, longer than you have here, really. Six. All right. All right. So you jump down, and as soon as you hit the ground, the floor gives way underneath you, and you fall to the floor below it. Um, but okay. you're able to keep a hold of yourself in the air. You land on your feet, and you don't actually injure yourself. It's kind of like balance. Yeah. Um, this room is partially on fire, though. Oh. Um, so Lucy yeah, calls... Yeah, but Slenderman there. <laughs> no, <laughs> not yet. Um, Lucy calls right, down, then... are you okay? I'll tell her it's fine, and I will check the corridor door first before I ask her to follow me. Okay. So, um, you, uh, there's, like, smoke blowing everywhere, like, and it blows into your face, and just on impulse you breathe in a little bit of it, you know, start coughing. Um, and there's, you get to the front door, but there is, part of the fire is in front of it, and you don't have the fire extinguisher with you. Still trying to get through the door. Steve, are you gonna? I mean, Ryan communicated what he was gonna do. Are you gonna go downstairs? Or are you gonna keep? Oh, can I go back downstairs? Yeah. And just leave Lucy where she is. Um, okay. Yeah, I'll try that. All right. Yeah. Whoa, maybe that's not a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm gonna go down to the room that's not on fire, right? Yeah. And open the the apartment. That's where Ryan said he was right, gonna go. That's where, so that's where I'll run down there. All right. Okay. Okay. Get that okay. Door open. 
All right, yeah, so you get in, you're able to open up that door, no mm -hmm. problem. Um, it's not locked. Um, and so you see that the floor has collapsed where Ryan fell down, mm -hmm. and then there is also Lucy up above, and she calls to you. Okay. So, okay, um, and I can tell that the apartment below is on fire? Yes, there is, like, a bunch of smoke coming up from it. Okay. It's actually impossible to see. Alicia, or Lucy, says, you know, Ryan fell down. He fell down there. Um, I mean, couldn't I just jump up a floor? Uh, you could try that, yeah. I was going to say, can I, lay, can I lay on the floor and put my arm down there and help him? Absolutely. In any way? We're yeah. Both gonna, yeah, let's do that. You're going to drag me down in there with you. So, we know that, but I will, I will attempt. Lucy starts to climb down through the hole down to your floor, and she asks for basically help pulling her over first. Okay. I will help Lucy first. Okay. Okay. So she is there with you. You manage okay. to do that. No problem. Um, All right, cool. Ryan, so you hear kind of something behind you. Um, oh, God! Over the fire, it's hard to tell. You turn around, and you find a long, emaciated figure standing in the smoke. In the smoke. In the smoke. Slenderman. Slenderman's in the smoke. All right, decision time, guys. Do I try to jump off, or do I face my fears with this Slenderman? piece of fence? Um, you, uh, you are at this point pulling Lucy in. Okay, that's what you're doing. But we're not feeling. All nervous. right, let's um, go, Slendy. I ready my fence. <laughs> All right, wait. Give me a second here. You're readying your fence. Um, it's hard to tell. You are coughing, but mm -hmm. you kind of, like I said, you guys okay. are still new enough that occasionally you do breathe. Like there's okay. so much smoke around. You have the psychological reaction still. So you are coughing regularly. It's hard to tell. I'm actually going to quickly use the restroom. All right. While David plans out While his David battle. gets into his battle stance. Now, I oh, definitely man. think oh, you, should, uh, you should take a swing at it with your wrought iron uh, thing. Just so we can see if that actually works. Because apparently mm -hmm. fire isn't what kill. you know. He's not really terrified of fire. Mm -hmm. I think Carrie lied to her. Or Carrie's just a druggie. Yeah, that's true. A stupid druggie. Yeah, so, hmm. All right, I'm back. All right, let's do this. All right, so you charge forward with your wrought iron bar. For the Empire. All right, you run forward at this guy. Are you using Celerity? Yeah, better use Celerity. All right, you're running forward, and then suddenly you feel the floor give out from under you again as you get near. Floor collapses, you find yourself laying on the floor of the basement, which seems to be some sort of utility laundry sort of room. You can see up above you through the smoke what seems to be a number of figures kind of leaning over the hole. I'll take them all on. <laughs> Just poke up at them. <laughs> take you all together. So yeah, you've just gotten Lucy in there, and you see that uh, it seems like something has collapsed down below. And Ryan has fallen even further. I will call out. All right, so I'm in. So I'm in the basement. I'll try to find the door up out of the basement. All right. Yeah, he doesn't respond to any calls, but it's hard to hear. I mean, if there's yeah, fire, there's, there's... A fire. I will get Lucy out of the building. All right. And then I will attempt to come back in and try and find Ryan. Okay. So you get her. Outside, are you going to try and go through the door into the first floor area? You don't know where the basement comes out. Um, so, yeah, I guess wherever I'll okay. go back in, try and find a basement door and whatever. Yeah. So, Ryan, you're trying to find your way out. Give me a uh, wits plus alertness. Wits plus alertness, five. All right. Yeah, fighting your way through the smoke, you are able to eventually find a door 
which leads up. And so, you know, sputtering and coughing, you emerge up to where, Stephen, you're looking around. All right. So I see him. Yeah. I grab him. I drag him outside, too. All right. Now I've got them both there. All right. Yeah. Everyone's outside together. And now we're, we're running back out the way we came in. Absolutely. That is now blocked off. But so, I'm yes. I'm giving them a lot of honey anyway. Um, I assume you're all moving as a group? Yes. All right. Then I'm not going to call for a strength plus athletics check um, because you're crippled. So. Where everyone's moving at your pace. Yes. So, yeah, you guys are moving through the fire, trying to get out, and uh, it seems like the way you came in has been blocked behind you. Okay, Auspex, is there any way clear? Yeah, give me a perception plus alertness. That's four. And you have two dots of Auspex? Mm hmm All right, so you start looking around for another way out. Then, back with Derek. Stalworth, you're here? Yes. All right. So, you are basically fighting with this guy. You've basically, you've got him under control. Um, when the wind picks up, and you start to see that uh, ahead of you, like, houses start burning in your path, so you have to start moving perpendicular to your way out and trying to basically outrun the fire. So give me a strength plus athletics. All right. That is seven. Okay. All right. So you try and find a way to force your way through, but then you find that uh, a building ahead of you is in flames, and then the building behind you is in flames, so you're basically trapped in a little bubble with fire blocking out either side. The area you're in now is not actually burning because it seems to be like a... Uh, a little yard area of a building that already burnt down. All right, let's see. So, uh, hmm. So, is there nowhere I can go? I can't go like around or something. Uh, so it, it seems to have surrounded you. Yes. But he's in. Uh, he's in a. He could earth melt. Right? There is bare earth there, so yes, it is possible to earth melt. But Carrie doesn't earth melt with him. No. Mm. So, am I trying to let this dude live? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah. He is. He is. We would have killed him already if we didn't is, want to. He is Ryan's uh, cool. All right. Well. I guess I'll find a way to save them. All right. Um, from what you can see, yeah, the fire has you completely surrounded. Hmm. What to do, what to do. You said I'm in, like, a yard area? Yes. Can I... Is there a hose? Can um, I, like... Yeah. Jump off of something in the yard and try to, like vault over a house? Um, you don't have any potents, do you? Uh, no. Yeah, you don't think you would be able to do that. Darn. So, is there a ho does the hose have water? Um, checking, yes, it does have some. Okay. Oh, so, so I can, uh, so I can try to sprinkle away for me to get through. Um, the fire is yourselves. burning a little bit too heavily for you to be able to open up a way through. Mm. Um, you could try and douse carry to send him through on his own. Since he's human, he's not going to go into frenzy if he gets any nearer the fire. Um, you would have you could try and do it yourself, but you would have to make a very very difficult courage roll. All right. Well, I'll douse carry down and send him alone. All right. So, he thanks you for your assistance, and he runs off, uh, cackling gleefully. Probably not in the correct direction. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you're gonna earth melt. Yep. All right. That costs a blood point, but it right. happens automatically. All right. So we're back with you guys. Um, it seems as though you're trapped as well. And uh, you're not sure. You don't have 
the ability to earth meld, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. No, we don't. But just as it's starting to seem hopeless, uh, you can, there's like a sound of thunder. I knew she was, she's getting the rains coming. I know, that's what my sire's doing. And then, uh, even though it's been very warm up until now, um, you know, thunder strikes and then rain starts pouring down. Yay. Okay. It does, uh, as you're looking around, you do find kind of a dampened spot with the rain coming down, you might be able to rush through. Okay, do I have any fire extinguisher left to yeah, you can... damp as much? In? Okay, so let's let's go that way. Yep, you're able to force your way through the fire. Okay. So we're out, we're back yes. in the fire break. After a little ways, you're able to get all the way out. All right, and Ryan and Lucy and I, we're all here. We're not aggravated and damaged because we're on nope. fire. All right, well, let's make our way back to Terry wow. and, and Derek. Although you do notice uh, Lucy does have some aggravated wounds. She seems to have the same well, burns the that you have. That have. All right, so let's make our way back to the car. Yeah, so Terry will come and pick you up. Okay, and I will say, where is Derek and Carrie? Uh, it says, I don't know. We did, they're not with you. We sent them back. Carrie. To, we sent them back to you. Um, they didn't make it. I haven't seen anyone. Oh, crap. All right, stop the car. <laughs> <laughs> crap. Okay, stop the car. Let's yep. go. We got to go find Derek and Carrie now. He's like, where Where could they be? I don't know. They were in between you and where we, we found Lucy. Uh, by this point, um, God. basically the fire is spread over that entire area. Um, you can check what little area you mm -hmm. see, but there's nothing... That you notice. Well, Derek, it was nice to know you. <laughs> no, that's cool. <laughs> I'd assume y'all was dead too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, well, you know, possibly, you know, we'll hope against hope, I guess, but there's nothing more we can do here. So, uh, Jonathan, that vehicle you got, are you, where are you taking it to exactly? Well, I told Steel I'd come to him, so I'm figuring his right. haven. I'll, I'll stop like a couple stops before and walk okay. the rest of the way. Yeah, and it is uh, basically it's a guy who's driving you. So, all right, so you drop a little ways away. By the time you guys get back, mm -hmm. uh, Jonathan is in the haven, waiting for you guys. And so you see these guys come in like singed; their clothes are all burnt. Uh, Lucy's with them. Uh, she's holding on to uh, Ryan. I'm looking sad. I've lost one hmm. of my charges. Anyway, so welcome home, Jonathan. Hello there. Hello there. It has been quite a while and quite the trip to get back here. Yes. It is Indeed. nearly dawn at this point. Um, Let's all have a rest. Yeah, where are you that guys sleeping like in the game? Absolutely wonderful idea. Well, I can explain everything tomorrow. I typically, uh, okay. The master bedroom for my side. Mm -hmm. I will take Derek's room. Okay. And then they'll have their. Ah, jokes on your sire. All right. They changed the sheets already. Oh, they changed the sheets already. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. So yeah, it is basically nearly done. You guys don't have time to even like talk to each other really when you guys bed down. Um, I assume you stayed out to look for Derek until kind of the last possible yeah. moment. Yes. Yeah. yeah, yeah, sure. You know, we, we, we tried uh, the polite amount of time to save his life. So... We made, we made an effort. Um, everyone loses a blood point. Okay. Derek, you emerge out of the earth the next evening. Okay, I am low on blood. Yeah, I imagine everyone is. Well, except for me. We're going to get around to that. <laughs> Derek, you emerge okay. out of... Uh, the earth, um, and you can see that the fire seems to have been burnt out, but you are basically surrounded by devastation on all sides. Well, I'm still alive, so that's all that matters. Yeah. Well, I think you're supposed to care about the environment or something. Oh, yeah. Ah. <laughs> Damn. Damn. So much destruction. <laughs> it hurts me. Uh, yeah, I can heal. You know, you didn't. Sound, you sounded uh, more sincere about Miles's sausages. Yeah, Miles's wiener. <laughs> I mean, that was that was like depressing. So, 
<laughs> so yeah, uh, if you want to look around for a... Uh, actually, Art probably got you another phone. If you want to call in for a pickup, you can do so. Definitely. I'll All right. do that. So the rest of you guys wake up, and you get a call almost immediately after awakening um, from Derek asking for a pickup. Well, of course, Derek. Yes, I am so glad to hear that. Oh, we thought you were dead. We were sure you were so dead. So is that Carrie? Fuck her just dead then. Who knows, Ryan? He may come back to haunt you. Anyway, I'm very oh, pleased I hope that not. Derek is, a, uh, is, a whip, is okay. Um, i take more pills so I have some All right. blood here. Um, I'm also spending to get rid of my aggravated damage. So, uh, here's a question. Ryan, you are low on blood. How low are you? I have two blood points. All right. Uh, well, you're in the danger zone where if you try and feed, you're obviously going to probably kill someone. Um, how do you want to handle it? What can I do? I have a few blood pills left. No. Okay. <laughs> well, Lucy says she does have some. So what I could do, so it's out of character, right? Hear me out. If I already get myself blood bonded to Lucy, then I can't get blood bonded to Steven. Then I can start taking his blood pills whenever I need them. Yes, that would work. Optimal. Lucy, come here. Om nom nom. <laughs> That's quite a choice. That worked so well for Jonathan last time. Listen, Lucy and I have got some business to attend to. We'll be right back downstairs in a minute. <laughs> All right. So, yes, she offers you her wrist, and uh, she will give you, like, three blood points. Um, and with your, you know, Fantastic. with your blood bond, when she tells you to stop, basically, you do. All right. I mean, like, we're not blood bonded, though, right? This is going to be step two, I think? This is step two, yeah. Yeah, all right, we're fine. Whatever. It is still a blood bond, but it's not a permanent blood bond. All right, I get you, I get you. Wait, how long does it take for it to go down? Um, not long. Interesting. I mean, you know... So, uh, yeah, you guys go to pick up Derek? Yeah. Yeah. All right. You, uh, pick him up. Okay. And you guys are able to get back safely to your haven. And this is the first time that everyone in the party has, has all been, been together. So we should probably catch everybody up to speed. So, I'm... I'm Familiar with what happened to Ryan, so Jonathan, why don't you tell your story? Very well then. Let me first ask you, what is the last thing about me that you remember? You were uh, in the woods, um, yeah, being attacked by Slenderman. Also, right. How with long a ago was that? I will just werewolf. point out, out of character, he doesn't know when he was calling you. You know that when you got there, he was gone for two days. Right. He doesn't know. Okay. So um, so that was the last time we heard from you. We later found out that we were actually two days ahead of you at that time, though. So you had been gone with Slenderman for two days before we got the call that you were in the forest fighting right. Slenderman with the werewolf. I recall that, too. And then I recall waking up in a shack in what I assume to be some kind of alternate dimension slash a really weird dream. And I spent quite a bit of time there. Mm -hmm. uh, let's just skip ahead a bit. I eventually woke up again after crossing through a bunch of different dimensions and being told by Terry that I had to kill myself. Let me just confirm, did you actually tell me to do that, Terry? Uh, Terry's like, I have not seen you since we went into the basement, like, weeks ago. Yeah. Very well, just making absolutely sure of that. 
Good. After Did you kill yourself? <laughs> no, I did not, but I was quite prepared to. Wow. So after that, I found myself in a much worse location in Florida. What? Yeah. Then I made my way to, I believe, Texas first. Getting then, better? Yeah. After that point, I had to spend five days there. Was it five days? I believe it was five days. Um, you spent a uh, little bit of time. Yeah, something like that. Uh, dominated by a prince to ensure a prince to ensure they didn't cause any kind of trouble. Mm -hmm. After which, I took a plane ride where I was framed for murder by a SWAT member. Mm -hmm. Then I finally arrived, and um, I kind of had to call in my life boon with Prince Loden to ensure I wasn't, you know, killed. Poor Valve's wife. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, Valve left and reminded me I need to speak with you later, Ryan. After oh. that, I uh, made my way here. So I wow. had a bunch of fun. Well, you did quite well to make it back, didn't you? Thank you. You have performed adequately, my friend. <laughs> All right. Hearing so... that from you means a lot. Now, <laughs> I know. Why don't you tell us what happened to you? Okay. Well, basically, when we separated and I went to take uh, the ghoul to safety, uh, we ended up getting surrounded on both sides, all sides, by uh, by the fire. So, wow. in order to uh, protect the ghoul, I uh, doused him down some water and I sent him on his way. And uh, I melted into the earth to protect myself and uh, waited out the fire. Wow, that's a cool power. Okay, so let's back up a little further. Since you arrived here with that Art Morgan guy, like, what happened since we were separated at the fort? Uh, <laughs> since we were separated at the fort? Yeah, like, like how, how did you meet that guy and stuff? He seems like oh. a fairly important a gangrel person. How did you meet him? Like, how did we first meet? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, um, well, you see, um, after, uh, that whole car crash happened mm -hmm. with the monster or whatever, yeah. um, I was just walking back, trying to walk back to civilization, and he stopped and gave me a ride, and, oh. uh, turns out he's a really high-ranking member of the, uh, of the, uh, the, the freaking... Nine world? Yeah. The clan that I am? <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, I see, I see. He ended up asking me a question. Uh, he asked me how many uh, how many winters, I believe, that I had been uh, a part of the clan. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know the answer. So basically, the clan protocol was uh, if someone, if you ask someone that question, they don't know the answer. You basically have to, you know, be like their uh, be their trainer. They're gonna be a trainee. You know, you gotta introduce them to the lifestyle. Oh, I see. I bet he was thrilled. <laughs> <laughs> he, he's a cool dude. Yes, yes. Reminds me of my younger days. <laughs> Your younger days. Yes, I was a hippie. Hmm. Even weird the counterculture. Very weird. Look at you now. I know. Sold out. Sold out to the mom. <sighs> all right. Well, apparently we've all had our own little uh, adventures. Terry and I wound adventures. up in, in Atlantic City. Mm -hmm. And what did you do there? Uh, we it, we interrupted a Tremere ritual. Which was very. Oh, yeah, how so? Give me the details. <laughs> um, and, uh, and so, but the true mayor chanter was, was quite helpful there and uh, helped, of course, called my sire. And that is why she is here with us now um, to help us uh, end this Slenderman problem, hopefully. I see. Emily. 
Uh, she she's still. Any. She's not oh, involved she's in not, this she's discussion. Not in our, she's not here with us. All right. Well, is Lucy here? Uh, yeah, she's here. So, so Lucy. I will... Mm-hmm. How did you get in the house? Yeah, that's my question. When I came back at the first time. All right. Um, well, you sent me that weird message when you were going out to the woods. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I tried to get in contact with you, but I didn't hear anything back. Um, so I came here to try and, you know, find out what happened to you. How did you get in? Yeah, but like, how did you get in? I mean, I picked the lock. Nice. This is your girlfriend. This is your girlfriend. I like your style. And then Ryan told me what the code was for the Okay, you get a withering look system. From, from Steven again. No, hold on. Did I tell her that? Um, you, uh... I mean, you were around, you hadn't really tried to hide the code from her when you came in the house and then, you know, punched it in for the security system. Okay, so I didn't tell her. She fucking looked and noted it. Yeah. I mean, nice. you were pretty open about it, but I mean, it wasn't really top secret because Jonathan has to know the code. That's true. Derek has to know the code. So the code it's is pretty so open. so moving out of this place. <laughs> <laughs> I really like her style now, though. I mean, she's observant. So, she has so aspects. So I know I have two thieves that I can call on now. Mm-hmm. She's not a thief, necessarily. Well. She's an infiltrator, that's for sure. <laughs> she did infiltrate. She's, she's, she's infiltrated She's already really one turn, remember? <laughs> oh, my. Alrighty. So I just had to get Lucy in my debt. Mm-hmm. She'll have Ryan bloodbound. Yeah. So I will still be in control of everybody. Yeah. It'll be good. <laughs> okay. So she can confirm that she did run into Jonathan in that weird, in that apartment. She was trapped in that apartment for days, Mm -hmm. um, couldn't get out, and she did meet up with Jonathan. Um, Oh, that was real. Huh. Yeah. Oh. I suspect that was merely a dream. Um, Well, it's a shared dream if that was the case. Interesting. I suppose there's no real difference between a shared dream and a different dimension at this point. All right. Well, obviously, we need to, um... So, Terry's like, wait, if people have been moving through time... He directs us towards Stephen. Did Jonathan meet me in the future? I suspect that may be the case. In that case, the future you told me to kill myself. So and the life... future you was also looking for Lucy. Hmm. All right. Hmm. Huh. But we found Lucy. For now. Well, actually, what if you might recall in the interlude, he asks if Lucy was still inside. Now, you assume that to mean it's because he's looking for her, but, of course... I will point out if he knows he was talking to you in the or he was trying to verify when he's talking to you is a possibility. Exactly. Uh, I or for time travel. something may happen to Lucy again. It's possible. So you know we've got there's a couple of because he did tell you afterwards that she would be all right is the other thing yeah. that he said. Okay. Huh. Well, then that sounds like. He's just trying to verify which Jonathan he's talking to. I feel like we're in that. And then that Terry Star says, Trek that does thing. sound like something I would do. Yeah. Like, you know, when data have, when there's a several data lined yeah. up and he's like, which one is the correct one? Me. That's the. <laughs> anyway. All right. Well, what, obviously we need to do some research on this whole uh, Slenderman thing. Um, mm mm-hmm. A fire apparently does not. I don't unless that wasn't Slenderman that Ryan saw. Maybe he was hallucinating. Possible. Who knows? There was a lot of smoke. You never saw it clearly. So we don't know if the iron works or what works. No. Okay. okay. You don't know where Carrie is either. 
We don't know what Harry is. He's not high on my list. <laughs> he should be. He just set fire to half the city. He probably should. And maybe that's... Uh, You're I obviously not need to do some, do some research. What's he going to do? Set it back on fire? He can well, set off the other fire, half on I'm fire. Gonna, I'm going to well, have to leave fairly soon, yes. No! He's obviously out of gasoline at this point. Hopefully. We've been playing for three hours. Yeah, we're pretty much nearly finished. Yeah, I right, think we're going to just to be safe. Yeah. So we actually, can actually, wouldn't... We can the handle forest it. would be um, quite easy to set on fire, because now it's charcoal. Yeah. Oh, ho, ho, ho. So we can handle experience now. If there's anything else you guys want to discuss, we can do it afterwards, and then Jonathan can leave whenever he needs to. Okay. Um, so we'll start off with what did you learn, and we'll begin with uh, Jonathan. I learned about... Did, did I say parallel dimensions last time? I uh, I yeah, did. I think so. In that case, I'll say that I've learned that they were, in fact, truly parallel dimensions and not just a weird fever dream. Okay. Uh, Ryan, what did you learn? Well, based on what I thought I could see from the basement, there are multiple gross manin. Okay. And, uh, Derek, what did you learn? I uh, learned that as a gangrel, I can earth mill to avoid fires. Okay. Steven? Um, I learned that Derek has a very interesting relationship with uh, a, a high member of his clan. All right. So uh, let's start with uh, Miles. Uh, who do you think won the Experience Point Award? I'd say Mary. Okay. Uh, Stalworth? I'd say Mary. Okay. Uh, David? I wouldn't say Mary. Alright. I'd say Miles. Okay. And Mary? No. I'm like, uh... See, I really thought Derek was true to form in the whole I'm gonna run away with Carrie. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good point. <laughs> you know. So, but Ryan also did very well, and I mean, everybody did well. All right. So. Well, you know. you've already gotten two votes, so we'll give it to you this time I around. I don't know. Um, so that is four for Steven, and that is uh, three for everyone else. And you guys do have uh, several, uh, probably months, because we're at early spring in-game, and we're moving up to basically mid-summer, so. Oh, um, Several months passed, you can spend experience points. Anyone right. who's down willpower points has it restored. Yay. And so I would like to locate and neutralize Carrie if he's still alive. All right. And um, one other thing is just while we're handling this now, I'm going to roll for blood just so that I, we definitely remember it. So. <laughs> uh, so, <laughs> Ryan, you are starting with five blood points. Nice. Uh, Steven, you are starting with 12. Uh, Derek, you are beginning at full. Nice. And Jonathan, you are beginning at 8. Beautiful. I'll take it. All right then, in that case, I will see you next week. All right, see you next week. Bye-bye. See you later.